Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're going to take a look at the Harmony mechanic for Grand Cathay Factions in Total War Warhammer 3. Now, being the central mechanic for Grand Cathay, you can find elements of Harmony in almost all aspects of gameplay, ranging from battles, to characters, to units, to the building choices and technology. So in order to better understand how all these components work together, let's first take a look at the Harmony meter at the top of the screen here, which is shaped like a lotus. And hovering over the middle here, you can see a quick breakdown of your faction's current harmony level or the balance between yin and yang in the various categories that include buildings, characters, events, and technology. Then depending on your net value amongst the four categories, you receive one of seven set of bonus effects that is better represented on one page here. So first off, when you are in harmony, or when your total amount of yin and yang points amongst the four categories total to zero, your faction will receive 20 points of increased diplomatic relations with all other Cathay factions, a 20% discount for all buildings, 40 points of growth for all your settlements, a 25% income boost for all yang buildings, a 25% income boost for all yin buildings, 8 points of control in all settlements, and minus 5 points of corruption in all settlements, and finally a new army ability called Ancestral Warriors for all armies. Now, Ancestral Warriors is a one-time use army ability that will summon a unit called Ancestral Warriors to aid you in battle for about 120 seconds. It's not a super strong unit, but you're never going to complain about a free unit that you can summon every battle that you don't have to worry about replenishing. Basically, you're rewarded handsomely for keeping your faction in harmony, but should you lose your balance slightly, and carry 1 to 3 points of yin or yang, the bonus will change to just 10 points of diplomatic relations with other Cathay factions, 20 points of growth, a 5% construction discount to the buildings of the opposite type, a 5% reduction in the income from buildings of the type that's currently overflowing, and a 5% bonus to the income of buildings of the opposite type. So essentially, the game will try to nudge you into building complementary buildings to try to restore the balance. But should you drop farther and farther away from the balance, to the point where you have a net of 4 to 6 points of yin or yang, then you will lose all diplomatic and growth bonuses and receive a larger incentive to build buildings of the opposite type, with a 10% construction cost discount and a 10% income boost to the buildings of the complementary type that you're missing, and you will lose out 15% income from the buildings of the overflowing type. Lastly, you will receive a control penalty of 6 points to all your settlements, and for players new to Warhammer but are familiar with historical titles, control is just the Warhammer term for public order. Then if you go beyond 6 points in either net in or net young value, then you will receive the biggest incentive to self-correct with a 20% discount to construction costs and a 20% income boost to the buildings of the opposite type, and a whopping 40% reduction in the income of buildings of the overflowing type on top of a 10 point penalty to control for all settlements. Now, if you look at all numbers here, there is no doubt that the optimum play at all times is to maintain harmony as the bonuses are just superior in every way with zero trade-offs. So to better understand how we can remain in balance, let's take a look at the four categories one at a time, starting with the buildings. So in the game, all infrastructure buildings are subdivided into three types, with each type having an inversion and a young version. Now these two versions will be mutually exclusive within the same settlement, which means if you build the in version, then the young version becomes locked to you. Although you can pay 60% of the original construction cost to convert between the two versions once they are constructed. Now the first of the three types of infrastructure building is the civic buildings, which mainly deals with growth. The young version provides additional construction cost discount while the inversion provides a local province income multiplier. I think optimally you want to start off by building the young variant first, before converting it to the invariant once you have achieved full build in the province. Then for the second type, we have industry, which will be the source of your tax income when you play as Grand Cathay. Here the young variant has a higher base income, while the invariant provides a small boost to trade income once you have reached tier 3. However, if you take a look at Tier 1 and Tier 2, the invariant industry buildings actually have more income on top of having the trade bonus. So this would be another example where you would go with one version first before converting 
to the other version in the late game. Lastly, we have the conscription building, which deals with recruitment and control. The Yang variant here will increase the starting ranks of peasant long spearmen and peasant archers recruited in the province, while the in variant will increase local army replenishment and reduce the recruitment cost for the same two units. Of these two buildings, the in variant is clearly better for the early game as the reduced recruitment cost and additional replenishment rate are both powerful bonuses. In the late game, depending on whether peasant units are still viable or not, this might not even be a building that I would consider, given its steep construction cost of 1,000, 1,500, and 2,000. Now aside from infrastructure buildings, garrison buildings can also impact your harmony, with two mutually exclusive garrison options in all provincial capitals. First, we have the Rampart Line, which is the Young variant. This building will help you unlock different defensive upgrades for your towers during siege defenses, but mainly they will provide you with additional garrison troops to help defend your city. As this is the Young variant, the Rampart Line garrison will be mainly melee units, whereas if you take a look at the Archer Platform Line, which is the In variant, most of the garrison there will be range units instead. And fortunately, that is going to do it for the buildings and their impact on Harmony, as we can move on to characters next. Now, characters refers to lords and heroes in your faction. By default, each lord or army commander will be worth either 3 points of int or 3 points of young. Their type will also determine if the entire army is considered an in army or a young army, which will matter in terms of certain bonuses from the tech tree that we will see later on. But aside from lords, there are also heroes or agents that will be worth only one point. Now, like past Warhammer games or the mythical creature agents in Total War Troy, these heroes can either be used as traditional agents on the field or become embedded in armies where they can join you in battle. And as with the lord, both the astromancer and the alchemist can either be in or young, so you have to plan accordingly to when you will recruit one in order to help you keep yourself in harmony. Now that leaves us with technology, as we will be skipping over events, as I do not want to spoil the campaign for you, but just know that you will have periodic events throughout your campaign, offering choices that will provide either in or young points on top of other effects. Now as for the tech tree for Cathay, it can be described as three symmetrical circles or rhombuses of sorts, with a single line of tech connecting them in the middle. And the technologies on this single line of tech are the only ones that do not impact harmony. All the other techs are young if they're above this line, or in if they're below this line. And all but four pairs of tech provide only one point of in or young, while these four pairs will provide three points instead. Now this guide will be way too long if we were to cover all the effects here on the tech tree, so instead, there will be a separate Grand Cathay Tech Tree guide in the future, probably around early next week. For the purposes of Harmony, we just need to know how the tech tree is structured in terms of the placements of the Yin and Yang tech, with emphasis on where the four pairs of three point techs are located. Now lastly, aside from being a faction mechanic for the campaign map, Yin and Yang are also a battle mechanic, where all melee units are considered Yang and all range units are considered in. And if placed near each other, additional bonuses to leadership and melee defense are given to melee units, while range units will receive bonuses to leadership and reload skill. And all these bonuses can be amplified to various degrees if a lord, hero, or certain special units with amplification bonuses are placed near them, granting up to double the amount of the base bonus, which we can see here. And with that, we have covered all aspects of the Harmony mechanic for Grand Cathay Factions. And I hope this guide can help you in your future Grand Cathay campaigns, as the Harmony mechanic can be a really rewarding one for players who plan their build orders and tech path to ensure they remain in Harmony throughout the campaign, as the Harmony bonuses will make a huge impact over the course of a long campaign. Now, of course, this guide is based on a pre-release copy of the game, so things can definitely change before launch or even after launch from patches and updates. So if any major changes do happen to the Harmony mechanic, I'll certainly make an updated version of this guide and ping the link in the comment below. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!